Welcome to another Attitude Special. Good morning. A couple of weeks back, Attitude met with young people making their transition from school to an independent adult life. Our program highlighted how some students with very high needs are forced to stay at school until they're 21, simply to retain their right to funding. A week ago, the government scrapped that rule. Today, we look at what else teenagers need. These are just a few examples of young people striving to have an ordinary life. I would want someone within the government who would sit down and actually think about what people with disabilities actually need. Really angry and embarrassed. Embarrassed? Yeah. Why? Because there, there is a 20 year old still at school. Imagine it, 20 years old and still at school. Oh, school? Oh, right. 2008. School. No school. I'm going to have to work until I'm 81 because we have had to take on a significant mortgage so that we can give Katie an opportunity at having a life. Leaving school and heading into the big wide world should be one of the most exciting times of a young person's life. Freedom, independence and hopefully a bit of money in your back pocket. But for kids with disabilities, it's too often not like that. To do what every other teenager does as a matter of course, for these guys, is a total slog. Why is it so hard? The guy just wants to go to uni, why is this so hard? I don't know. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be like this. Ryan's passed all the qualifications, he's done really well, he should be able to do what all his mates are doing and go to university and say, here I am, here's my qualifications, when do I start? I do this. In our first look at transition, we highlighted the fact that you can't use a one-size-fits-all approach for students with disabilities. There are many factors that need to be considered. Yet, at the end of the day, all these kids want is an ordinary life, just like their peers. I was there really devastated because here I was stuck in my little box again, not moving forward, just going backwards. Gina's 20. She completed all her seventh form subjects a year ago. But she was forced to return to school this year in order to keep funding that would support her through tertiary or vocational study. How'd you get on with your 2007 Cambridge exams? My biology, I got 90% and my geography, I got 94%, so that was pretty good. Ryan has topped the world in geography in the prestigious Cambridge exams two years running. He was adamant. He was leaving school and heading to university. But those plans meant he lost funding. He's been worried how he'll get to and from university and who will look after him. Most of all, who will pay for it all? Go, 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 go. Are you posing? Are you on camera? <laughs> For many of the young people, not a lot is happening. We need follow through, we need connectors, we need uh, people who can guide through the process so that there are some really good positive outcomes for people, so they can have ordinary lives. Katie's family want her to live independently, but to create the best situation for her, they've had to make a brave move out of their family home. It's easy to criticise, so instead we hunted out employers, agencies and young people that we regard as success stories. Why are you keep on smiling all the time? Because I like, I'm excited to come to work. Heather fairly benefited from an incredibly passionate and understanding employer. A job was created for her, but her employers now insist they are the winners. I will need money. I shop every day in a nice place to live. Alex Sneddon is quite the man about town. He has a job, a girlfriend and independence. Best of all, he's doing what he wants. It seems to me that transition involves four key elements. Tertiary study and employment, moving out of home and having a relationship. Westlake boys, Westlake girls. Ryan Leach represents students making that first move from school. There are hundreds of kids with physical disabilities who want to go on to tertiary study. I know what I want to do, but you know, that can change. Ryan's case highlights what some of the issues are. 
this year have met with unprecedented success at Westlake Boys High School. Last year was Ryan's final year at Westlake Boys High School. Comprehensive funding ensured he was well supported there, testimony to the success of integrating students with disabilities into schools. But Ryan's case also highlights the way in which many families have had to battle to get support at the transition phase. As a very high needs student, Ryan had funding tagged to his needs called ORS. He was also in line to receive substantial funding to support him in study beyond school. But to receive this money, he had to stay in school until he was 21. Because he opted to head to university, the family lost this next phase of funding. It made no sense for Ryan to stay at school. I'm already doing university level work at school in my seventh form here. And there's not a lot else I can do at school, especially until I'm 21. That's two, three more years of subjects and it's, there's just nothing for me there. Not anymore, I'm, I'm finished. I've done everything I want to do. We followed this family for almost six months as they strive to find another way to fund Ryan's support. Well, we've got there somewhere. Yeah, maybe. Ryan needs money to cover transport to and from university and a full-time carer while he's there. I'm sure other disabled people have done it, but nobody with Ryan's condition has ever done it, so it's quite new for him and for us. Today we've come to meet the disability coordinators for Ryan to work out how he can come to university, how we access um, support workers, lecture theatres, it's, yeah, it's the logistics of disability, how we get around, what he can do, what he can't do, how we pay for it. Should I just come in as that gap going to be... Uh, Universities realise that kids like Ryan are now expecting to continue their studies. Most universities now have disability coordinators. But we probably don't have anybody who will require the level of carer support currently within the system that you're going to. So it's going to be, it's a learning curve for us and a learning curve for you. Can you pick again? Yeah. <laughs> um, we will have had people in the past, it's just a matter of with staff turnover and things. Mm -hmm. um, and just making sure that before we do anything we make sure that that care is available and that it's going to be practical. Yeah. If you know what I mean? Yeah. Because um, part of my job is to be a little bit negative and just say that we don't want to start you out on something that is going to collapse, something that's going to endanger you or something that's going to um, get either your physical or mental health at risk. Yeah. A lot of the community care organisations struggle to find staff. so we need This to meeting need, highlighted yeah. that they don't have the ability to back um, up the good intent. It doesn't seem like the right links have been created to smooth the way for kids like Ryan. I basically found out that the university can't offer a lot of support themselves. Um, they can give contacts so that we can go and find out information about funding and caregivers ourselves, but they can't actually do a lot for us. I feel like I've been kicked again, you know. I've got a child that really wants to achieve and go places and there's no one out there helping us. I thought we'd get a bit more help than we have, but obviously not. Once again, Judy was left wondering how to pay for tens of thousands of dollars in support. A more cohesive approach to transition could save her from months of hassle. That was last October, and Ryan's due to start uni in less than a month. I've come by to see what's happening. Judy, it's the start of February. You're still a month out of university starting. Where are you presently at? I'm presently at filling in all this paperwork and trying to get an answer from any one of them would be really good. But no answer so far. Oh, sorry, except from the university who say Ryan's course has been approved. So I'm a bit angry that there's no funding available and no one will actually help us for me to get to university with a caregiver, someone just to look after me. Um, it's quite, it's very frustrating. If you